So, basics of fighting wildfire. So, imagine 2,000 degree wall of fire, 100 feet high. You can feel the heat from 50 or more yards away. It's so hot that all the, the heat is convective, which means the flames aren't actually touching the fuel and lighting them on fire. The heat from those flames is lighting them on fire from 10 or more feet away to combust them, right? So I'm gonna be talking about the basic steps of fighting a wildfire and what's required to do that. Uh, who knows, maybe you get something out of it. Uh, you guys, something that I hope you get in a situation that you might encounter. Um, but wildfires are a passion of mine. I've always loved it. Um, the first opportunity I got, I got red carded with the state of Missouri. Um, I'm a licensed wildfire uh, fighter. And uh, this is actually something anybody can do. You don't have to be with the Forest Service or anything. Anybody can volunteer to go out west. You have to get paid to do it. Um, you just got to go through a class, put a little money, a little time into it. Um, so today I'll be covering the initial call of the fire. I'll um, move on to organization and planning. Our third will be suppression, and our last will be mop up and rehabilitation. So we'll start with the initial call uh, and show you these guys. That's Popper Bluffs Fire Engine. That's our fire tech. That's what it looks like. So what will happen is fire starts out west. They give us a call here. We'll start putting a team together. I'm um, usually mock one, mock two teams. Um, and whatever your specialty is, so if you're a crew boss or you work on a hand crew, we'll put together a team like that so everybody has, you know, everybody fits in together real good. Um, we'll begin to get our PPE together, which is our personal protective equipment. Uh, that's your boots, your Nomex uh, pants and shirt, your fire resistant gloves, hard hat, eye protection, ear protection, whatever tools we're going to use, our pack, uh, use a 65, 75 pound pack, um, somewhere in there. Those actually, both of those two go into uh, all your gear. Um, we get all this up and so we're going to head out west. So uh, we'll move on to our organization and planning. Um, this is going to be our second topic. So the first thing organization and planning is you have instant command system, uh, which is the definition of which is from the National Park Services uh, website. It's a management system that puts together for interagency cooperation uh, so that we can all work together while we're out there. And all that means is if we're out west in the Forest Service and the National Park Service and their local agencies are trying to work together on a, wild, on a wildfire, we all use the same management system and so we can all make sure we communicate effectively. So this is that management system. The first thing uh, in your management system is incident commander. This is the person who's running the whole show. Uh, he's gonna start everything. He's gonna start making the plan. And the first thing he does is make branches. His first branch is operations. These are your guys that are gonna be actually out there fighting the wildfire, um, getting the job done, planning. Um, they're bringing in information, evaluating it, and figuring out the best way to uh, promote an action plan, which is what we're going to do. Logistics, these are the guys that bring in uh, all of our tools that are going to go in and out, broken tools, our food and water, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then finance administration kind of explains itself to take care of all the finance and make sure we all get paid. Um, so those are all that go into the ICS system. Um, the next step of the organization and planning is our fire triangle. This is kind of the basics. Um, we have oxygen, heat, and fuel needed for a fire to work. Our job is to remove one of those so the fire suppresses itself. And two terms I'll be talking about um, later on, you'll hear me mention is the green and the black. Um, the green is any unburned area that we haven't actually got to yet, and the black is any area that's burning or is current, or already has been burned. So our next will be, we'll size up the fire. Um, sizing up the fire first is fire behavior. This is called torching and crowning. This is whenever the, tree, the fire is actually moving from treetop to treetop. You have a fire burning that way, and you also have your ground fire, a very dangerous situation to be in. This is spotting. That's whenever embers off your main fire are hitting a hill uh, and creating fires all around you. Could even be behind you. Like I said, another dangerous situation. The next thing we look at when sizing up a fire is weather. So big angle down there that's accumulating in this cloud. That means cold fronts coming in. A lot of wind's going to come. Um, that's your topography or lay of the land. You need to know what it looks like. And this is hard to see, but it's timber slash. Um, like blow down. That's a bad fuels area. It's going to get really hot. Um, and our last thing on organization and planning will be safety zones and uh, escape routes, which are what they sound like. Safety zone being the area where you get to if the fire gets real bad. Uh, we'll try to make it to there because the fire can't get us there. Escape route will be how we get there. And the escape routes are changing throughout the day, pretty much as we move up the hill. Um, they kind of change with us. So all these things uh, work together to organize and plan this. So um, we'll go into our next topic, which is our suppression techniques, uh, which how to control and eventually eliminate the fire danger. Um, so the first thing we carry with us then is that little green book. That's the IRPG, or Incident Response Field Guide, uh, pocket guide rather. And that just keep, keeps us, lets us know in any situation, if we're not sure what to do, it'll have something in there on what to do. Um, and then we'll go into teams. So 
as a team, so you have hot shots. And these are you guys that are working right on the fire or fire line. Uh, and you have smoke jumpers. These crazy guys are, if you have a little remote fire out there, they're going to parachute in and do the same thing as a hot shot whenever they get there, except they get to parachute in, which is pretty cool and um, pretty crazy. So the next thing we'll do is begin to build that line. So it's called a control line. Control line is the line that's going to go around the fire. A big part of the control line is your fire line. Um, which right here is the fire line, for example. So the fire line can be built a few different ways. Uh, one of the most common is hand. You know, a hand crew comes in there, you get a short, quick stroke, so you can go down deep by hand. Usually two and a half times flame hike. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of hiking. Um, or you can get a bulldozer. And if you can get a bulldozer in there, that's what we're going to do. It's a ton easier, and it's a whole lot faster. So that's how we build the fire line. Now you build your fire line from anchor point to anchor point. An anchor point is any kind of natural barrier that's going to help us stop the fire. Usually a large outcrop in a rock, a uh, road, or maybe a river over here. So we'll build our fire line between those two points. We'll have our anchor points and all that together um, works as our control line. Now if we get all that stuff done before the fire gets there, and there's still some green area that's unburned between us and the fire, we'll begin to back burn all that. Uh, and it'll create a bigger buffer zone between us and the fire line and help us even more. So now what if you're out there and the situation gets bad uh, and you have to use what's called a fire shelter, which is what's in that little blue bag right there. So if I can't get away from the fire, I'm looking for an area with light fuels, um, grasses, things like that. I'll use my tool. I'll clear off a four to eight foot rectangle, and then I'll pull that out. It's kind of like a little blanket. It goes over you, and you get down on your hands and knees, and uh, just wait for the fire to come, basically. It's going to get really, really hot in there. Um, you'll, hopefully no trees are going to fall on you. It'll get over 200 degrees. You'll get 30 degree burns, but hopefully it will save your life uh, and make a big difference, you know. So, and then we also have tragedy fires. <clears throat> Occasionally, I mean, so what happened. So, a common denominator, common denominator with tragedy fires is you'll have wind change, you know, erratic winds, uh, narrow canyons, box canyons. Um, if you were to create a fire line like this on the downside of the hill, obviously the fire's gonna climb up it. Bad situation to have, uh, to be in. Uh, so, a couple examples of this would be 94 South Canyon fire, killed 14 firefighters. 49 main goals fire, uh, until 13 firefighters, it's according to the National Institute of uh, Fire Center. And then, uh, and all these things work together. So all these are suppression techniques, you put them all together and then that's how we stop the fire. Last thing we we'll talked about in our final category is mop up and rehabilitation. It's actually a really boring step. Uh, that whole black area has to be gridded back and forth, looking for any kind of heavy fuel still burning. Um, also look for root systems, believe it or not, Fires can actually burn underground through roots for days. They pop up in the green and restart the whole fire. So you got to look for that. Um, any green areas in the black that are unburned, we'll go ahead and burn those off. Any hazard trees that are out there, we'll go ahead and cut those down, make sure they don't hurt anybody. And then the last step is rehabilitation. So if there's any man-made thing out there that we did that's going to harm the environment, we got to clean it up and we got to make sure uh, we don't leave anything out there. But actually, fires are really good for the forest. Uh, and they, they make it look a lot better. That's why we do prescribed burns around here. Uh, so all these things that I talked about work together. And if we get them all done right, we, it's a pretty successful incident. So <clears throat> now I've only covered the basics of this. There's actually a whole lot more that goes into the wildfire than what I covered here. Uh, but we covered the initial call when we come out. We covered organization and planning. We covered suppression techniques. We covered mock up rehabilitation. So one of my hopes when doing this was that Maybe somebody would be interested in it, and you can look into the challenge of becoming a wildfire uh, fighter. Or hopefully you can I mean, get something out of it that'll help you in a situation around here. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's really, really dangerous to do all this. It's a whole lot of physical work. It's a physical and mental challenge. Um, but I love it. So, thanks.